Good morning. Bad. Aaron Susaday. It's good to be here in Phnom Penh Tamai this morning. I always enjoy coming to Phnom Penh Tamai. Most of the time that I I come to the English classes at night. And have fun with the English classes. Uh, but two weeks ago, I came, uh, I came to the afternoon service, in the evening service. And it was great to see uh, Pastor Mala and Kirsten, to see them installed as elders uh, in the church. And it was great to see the way that the church uh, honored Pastor Viria and Viriak and his wife uh, as well. And I, I also hear that last night there was a, yesterday there was a soccer game. Okay, where are the guys from Kampong Cham? All right. I don't, you probably don't remember me, but I've been at the church in Kampong Cham. I've been at the place in Kampong Cham. But we welcome you this morning. It's good to have you here today. This morning, I want to share a story from the Word with you. Uh, but the title of my message is a question. And the question is, who are you? So I have a question for every one of you this morning. Who are you? I want to ask you this morning, who are you? I'm a man. He's a man. Okay. Do you know this man? Score. Yes. Yeah. Who is he? His name is Manit. His name is Manit. Okay. Does he like to play football? Yes. Yeah. Does he like to eat rice? Yes. Oh, is he a nice man? Okay, good. Okay, one more question. Who am I? Teacher. All right. He does not know who I am. It's okay. I am not a famous man. I'm like you, ordinary man. But I want to ask you this morning, who are you? Because each and every one of us, we want someone to know us. We want friends. We want people to love us. This week, we have a holiday. There's a, there's a holiday that's growing more popular in Cambodia. On February 14th, 14th, many people now are starting to celebrate uh, a holiday called Valentine's Day. I see some of you smiling. <laughs> On Valentine's Day, many the boys, they buy the flowers or they buy the candy or they buy the toy bear to give to the girl to say, I love you. And everyone is hoping, oh, I hope someone buys something for me to tell me that they love me. We all want to be loved. We all want someone to know who we are. 
But we have to be careful. First, we need to know who we are. Because sometimes people, we, sometimes people, they do love us, but sometimes they give us things like the candy or the flowers because they want something. And they're not doing it because they love us, they're doing it because they want to get something. And so sometimes I see holidays like Valentine's Day and I think maybe not so good. We should show each other that we love each other every day. People should know us because they love us and because they want to, to be in relationship with us. Not because they want something. So it's important for us to know who we are and to be confident. Now, this morning we're going to read a story out of the Bible. And I want you to open your Bible. Do you have your Bible this morning? If you don't have a Bible, I, know, I want to tell you something. It's important that you get a Bible. I'm an old man with white hair. And I will tell you, in all of my life, this is the most important book, the most helpful book that I have ever had in all of my life. If you don't have a Bible, then you need to ask Pastor Mala, Pastor Mala, I need a Bible. Pastor Chantry, I need a Bible. Petra, I need a Bible. Maron, I need a Bible. And you keep asking them until someone gives you a Bible. But some, some, no, no, ban. Okay, you bring it, you read it every day. And there's some great things in this book. Now, Chantry, Chantry is going to read for us a passage. It's in Acts chapter 19. And there's a story, and when he reads the story, it's going to be a funny story. Acts chapter 19. And we're going to read verses 11 through 20. And I want you to listen to the story. If you don't have a Bible, I want you to listen to the story and imagine the story. បើសិនជាអរលោកអ្នកបងប្អូនអត់ទាត់មានប្រកំពីទេសូមស្ដាប់ប៉ុណ្ណែសំយោគចិត្តទុកដាក់ស្ដាប់ហើយស្រមៃ
nu mơ nia nơ krong a pê sô tiếng sa chu đa tiếng sa gret ban đăng rương tiếng ni hai kout klai krup krup nia pê nu kê lực đom kang pê niêm rô bóp rang mặt cha jesu mì nè chu 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 nếu một kê anh tiền ở khu này phòng Kê bàn kết cụ Rồi bỏ tiền nụ Khơi thà miên đầm lấy Pram mơn đuồng Một bí bà ông mà chắc bàn xâm đàn Bà chế xa đà đồ chân này hỏi Bàn chí bà bần tu rì chùm ràn Nâng miên bà sơ tập hiếp Căn tay khlang lạng khlang lạng Now I will tell you when I first read this story When I was a young man Nhâm trong bà ông nè bà ông thà Nếu bà đạc chùm ăn bà bần tu Kà bì chùm nơi khu mình To me, this was a very strange and a very funny story. When I read the Bible, it's like a movie inside of my head. Because for me, if I just read the word, sometimes it's confusing. Or sometimes it's boring. But if I imagine it like a movie, then I begin to understand it. And I begin to ask questions. Why? So I imagined this one like a movie. When I was a young man, I imagined it when I read it just like a movie. And the first time, the first time that uh, that that I read this story, I imagined it like the Kamai ghost story movie in the movie theater. Seven boys going in the village. And there's this man, and he's got the evil spirits in him. Oh, and they try to tell him, they try to tell the evil spirit, go away by this man named Jesus. And then this man, one man, I don't understand how this happened, but one man, he jumps on seven men. How was one man so strong he jumps on seven men? He steals their clothes. And he makes them run out of the village. Doesn't this sound like a strange story? And when I was young, I thought it was funny. Okay. But as I've gotten older and had more experiences, and I read more about the story, then I realize there's many more things to understand about the story. When I read this story, I see three kinds of people. Okay. In the first verses, 11 and 12, it talks about people who are sick. It talks about people who are affected by evil spirits. People with many different kinds of problems. How many of you know that sometimes we get sick? Sometimes we have problems. Okay. The Bible, in the story, we hear about people that are sick and people that are having problems. Now, I want to tell you this morning, if you're here and you're sick this morning, you're here this morning, you're saying, oh, the evil spirits have been harassing me. Sorry. If the, you say the evil spirits, they've been harassing me. 
Rồi còn nè khá đầy uh, Anh như dây tháng Vì nhiên là các bạn phía em Sẵn cất sẵn cân chỉ vật bắt nhóm I have some good news for you Nhưng chẳng bắt đầm nâng lỡ Sẵn bắt đầm nâng lỡ God loves you Rồi chìm chắc sẵn lãnh Ở lúc nè bằng bốn There's healing for you This story tells you that those demons They have to go in Jesus name It's good news for you this morning. It's important that we understand this story. If we have a heart to help other people, it's important that we understand this story. How many of you like to help other people? Raise your hand. If you like to help other people, it's important that we know this story. Now, I know it's people get a little bit worried when you start talking about evil spirits. You talk about the ghosts and the spirits. Some of you may think, oh, this man up here that's talking, he's a bit strange. But I want to tell you about some of the experiences I've had in life. Why this story has become very real to me. Now, when I was a young man, I was like I was 20, 21 years of old, 21 years old, I went to the country of Mexico to be a missionary for six weeks. While I was in Mexico, I taught English to the neighborhood, in the neighborhood. And made friends with the people in the neighborhood and was telling people about Jesus. There was this one man who I was helping to him to learn English and we became very close friends. And when it came to the end of my time and I was ready to go back to the United States, he brought me some gifts before I left. He bought me some sandals. He bought me some shoes. And I liked them. There were some nice leather shoes. They were good. But he also gave me a little statue. He gave me a little sculpture. He, he wasn't a Christian, and this was a statue of their native god, their native uh, idol in, the, in, uh, in Mexico. And when he gave it to me, I wanted to be nice. I did not say, no, I don't want this. I just said, thank you. And I just put it in my suitcase. When I got back to the United States, I was unpacking my suitcase, I got my shoes, oh, my nice shoes, I like these. And I took the statue out and I put it beside my bed, on the table beside my bed. And when I put it on the table beside my bed, I felt the Holy Spirit inside me say, no, that should not be in your house. You need to get rid of it. But I didn't listen to the Holy Spirit. I thought, oh, it's okay. It's this my friend. He gave it to me. Maybe I should keep this. And so I left it there and for maybe a couple of weeks. And then one night while I was sleeping, 
I was woken up by a noise. It went boom. And I woke up and I turned on the light and I looked and the statue was laying in the floor and one arm was broken off. And I was sleepy and confused and I woke up the next morning and I thought, oh, maybe I turned over on the bed and I knocked it off the bed. So I glued, I glued the arm back on and I put it beside the bed. The Holy Spirit said, you need to get rid of this. A couple of weeks later, a couple of days later, again, I was asleep. I woke up, I turned on the light, I looked in the floor, the other arm was broken. So, did I listen to the Holy Spirit? No. And I glued the arm, put it back on, and put it beside the bed. This is a true story. I still remember now the sound in the night. Two or three nights later. This time I turned on the light. And I looked in the floor, and the statue was shattered into many, 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 many pieces. I could not glue it back together. And God said, I am in you, this is your home, I am in this home, and these things don't belong in your home. And I, yes, God. Uh, many years later, one, one time I, I was sitting in my, I was sitting in my home, and a young lady, she was about the age of some of you, she came and she knocked on my door. I didn't know this girl. When I opened the door, she looked at me and she says, Hey, I heard you are a pastor. I said, I don't know who you are. You don't know who I am. How do you know I'm a pastor? She said, it doesn't matter. I have a problem. She said, my mother, me, my father, all of us in our house. This, she was my neighbor. And she said, everyone in our house, we've seen this black thing. He moves through the house, and we're all afraid of this black thing that's moving in the house. And she said, the neighbors told me that you're a pastor, and you're the man that will know what to do. I said, okay. Okay. All right. So I told her, I started at the beginning, I started to tell her about Jesus and who Jesus was. And I told her, I can't do anything for you. But I know a God who can. And I began to explain to her. And I began to explain to her that Jesus 
was the one true God and that he was all powerful and that all evil spirits had to answer to him. He had authority over them and he could make them go. And I said, I want you to go home. I, pray, I want you to go home, tell your family what I've said. I'm going to pray for you, and that spirit, it has to go in Jesus' name. And they went home. I didn't see her again for maybe four or five more days. And then one day she walked into she walked in my knocked on my door again. She said, Pastor, I just want to tell you something. She said, I did what you told me to, and no one in my family has seen the black spirit. We haven't seen it again in our home. It's gone and we are not afraid. And she said, on Sunday, my whole family, we went together and we went to church. My mother, my father, and my brother we all gave our life to Jesus on Sunday. She said, thank you for telling us about Jesus. We don't have to be afraid anymore. When I read this story now, I don't read it and think it's just a funny story. Because of these experiences in life, I realized these things are weird, real. The Word of God is real. The first kind of person, the first person in the story were people who were sick. But there was a second type of person in the story. Talks about the man named Paul. It says that wherever Paul went, people who were sick were healed. And the evil spirits, they had to leave. Paul went around and he was able to help people. Why was Paul able to help people? Many of you raised your hand and you said, I want to be able to help people. Do you want to be like Paul? Do you want to be like Paul? Do you want to be like Paul? Okay. The Bible is full of stories of men and women just like Paul. And we can be just like Paul. We can pray for people. And we can see people's lives changed. Then there was a third type of person in the story. It was the, the men, it was the, the seven boys. When we read the story, it tells us these seven sons of Sceva, and it tells us the man's name. And it tells, you, it tells us that their father, that he was a high priest. These were people who they had grown up in the church. They'd grown up in the temple. They knew the word of God. We even, we even know that they had heard about Jesus. They knew about Jesus. 
But we can tell from the story that they did not know Jesus. I think it's interesting that the Bible does not tell us their names. We will never know who they are. But they didn't know didn't know Jesus. But they wanted to help people. Or maybe they just wanted to be famous. Okay, sometimes some of us, we want to be famous. We want to be the famous singer. The famous singer. Or we want to be the rich man. Why do we want to do this? Because we want everyone to know who we are. Okay. We want to be. So maybe these seven sons, maybe they wanted to help people, or maybe they just want to be famous. We don't know. But we can read what happened to them. In verses 14 and 15, 13, 14, and 15, it tells us that they tried to cast the demon out of the man who had the demons. And they said, oh, demons, you have to go in the name of Jesus who Paul preaches about. They had heard about Jesus, but they didn't know Jesus. There may be some of you who've come to church, you've come many times, and you say, well, I've heard, I come, it's a great place, I love the people of the church at Phnom Penh Tamai. They are so happy and they are so nice. So maybe there's some of you, You've come to church many times. You say, I love the people of the church of Phnom Penh Tamai. It's such a happy place. The people are so nice here. And I like hearing about this guy, Jesus. But maybe you don't know Jesus. Now, these seven sons, they tried to cast out the demon, and what happened? What happened? It says that the spirits inside the man made the man jump on the seven boys, take their clothes, and made them run. But before he did, he said something that I find very interesting. The demon said, Jesus. I know. Paul, I know about. I recognize him. But who are you? And then he jumped on him and sent them, sent them running out of the village. Now, if you study the words where it says, Jesus, I know. In the original language of the Bible, in Greek, that word know means that they knew him intimately, that they had been in contact, they had seen him or been in contact with him. Now, 
You mean the spirits, they knew Jesus? How did they know Jesus? What does the Bible tell us about Jesus? Tells us that when Jesus died on the cross, where, where, what happened? When Jesus, the Son of God, he died on the cross, do you think that Satan and the, and the evil spirit, that they were happy? They saw Jesus die on the cross, and what, then what happened? It says that Jesus descended down to hell, and he took the keys. Does it mean literally that he took the keys? Is there a gate and are there keys? The key is a symbol of authority. If I have the key, then I own the house. If I have the key, I own the motto. But I it means that means I have authority. I have authority. These demons, they knew when Jesus descended to hell, he took authority and he rose again to heaven and they knew him. They knew Jesus is God. He has authority over us. And it says, Paul, we've heard about him. Now, again, this story is strange to me. But I think about it. I think, do the evil spirits, they go around and talking, oh, this Pastor Paul. Stay away from him. He knows Jesus. Ooh, have you heard of Pastor Mala? Pastor Mala, he knows Jesus. Whenever he comes into the village, whenever he comes into the town, whenever he comes into the class, we must leave. Oh, Miss Kirsten, when Miss Kirsten, when she comes into the class, when she comes in to preach, she comes in to teach, or she comes in to share. Jesus is inside of her, and we must go. I want to ask you a question this morning. When you walk into your home, when you walk into your workplace, when you walk into your school, are the demons of hell, are they afraid? Are you full of Jesus? Uh, are you a light to your community? Are you a light to your community? Are you a light, uh, a witness to your community? These evil spirits, they knew who Paul was. But they didn't know these seven boys. The reason they didn't know these seven boys is because they did, those seven boys didn't know who Jesus was. They had heard about him, but they did not know him. I know many of you this morning, you said, I want to be able to help people. And I ask you the question this morning, who are you? It's, in, it's important that we know who we are. 
วิมิสระสำคัญคลางเมนเทนแต่ยังจะสกอตตะคลุนยังจีเนี่ยนะ In order for us to know who we are จังเนเปได้ยังสกอตคลุนยังจีเนี่ยนะ In order for us to know which one of those kinds of people am I แต่แต่ยังมีเลกันนะไปยังไหม The most important thing for us to know is who God is ดับงมพอดเอาไว้ได้ยังตรึกดังยังตรึกดังท่าตาเปรี้ยบยังมีเลกันนะไปยังดุจมาได้ I told you this morning I'm not a famous person or important person ยังจังปรับอารมณ์เนี่ยบางปอนท่าเขาไม่ชื่อมนุษย์สำคัญให้ก็ไม่ชื่อมนุษย์ได้ละใบได้ What's important is not who I am it's who God is เอาไว้ได้สำคัญอัดสำคัญแต่ขยมจีเนี่ยนะที่เป็นอะไรสำคัญเปรี้ยบขยมจีเนี่ยนะ It's important this morning that you know who God is วิสำคัญครั้งมันเต็มดาวลงเนี่ยบางปอนตรึกกลัวถ้าเปรี้ยบยังชื่อเปรี้ยยังดุจมาได้ Who is he? The Bible tells us that he is like a rock and like a strong building or a strong tower. If he's a rock and he's the strong tower, and I know him, then I will always have a safe place to go. The Bible tells us that He is Almighty God and all-powerful. If I know Him and He is inside of my life, then I can be confident. How many of you would like to be confident in life? When we walk into our school, when we walk into our job, it's important for us to be confident. If we know the Almighty and all-powerful God, we can have that confidence. The Bible tells us that He is holy. If he is holy and we know him, then he is in the process of making us become more righteous and righteous people. That's important. We all struggle with sin. But if we know who our Father is, we know the Holy God. He will help us. The Bible tells us that He is the Savior. This is good news to me because this means I have eternal life. I'll never forget one day I was in a village uh, talking to a husband and a, uh, and a wife. And the husband was telling me about his wife. He was telling me how strong she was. In her faith. She was telling. He was telling me. He said they, that this couple. They were older. They had lived during the, the Khmer Rouge period. And he was telling me, he said, Pastor Wayne, during the Khmer Rouge, she would witness to people and tell them about Jesus. She said, everyone else in the village was, they were sad or they were angry or they were afraid. But she was always happy. And he said, "I used to tell her, don't talk to people about Jesus." If someone hears you, they're going to kill us. You know what she said? She said, "I don't have to worry." Jesus is my Savior. I would just go on and be with Him. She knew who she was. Because she knew Jesus was her Savior. One of the names for God in the Bible is Jehovah Jireh, the God our provider. 
มีนเปลี่ยนนิ่มระบอบระอังมีนนิ่มมวยในขนมประกบปีสัญญาจ้าบันใจนะระอังจีประโยชน์ว่าใจเลยมีนในทางประอังจีเปลี่ยนแบบกุดกุ้ง If he is provider, then we will have what we need. We may not be the famous person or the rich person. We may not be the famous person or the rich person. We may not be the famous person or the rich person. We may not be the famous person or the rich person. We may not be the famous person or the rich person. We may not be the famous person or the rich person. We may not be the famous person or the rich person. We may not be the famous person or the rich person. We may not be the famous person or the rich person. We may not be the famous person or the rich person. We may not be the famous person or the rich person. We may not be the famous person or the rich person. We may not be the famous person or the rich person. I am a child of Almighty God. So now, when I read this story, I ask myself, which one of those people am I? And I say, God, I want to be someone who knows You. I want to be someone who loves You. When I walk into a village, when I walk into a home, I want to bring positive change. I want to help someone, and I can do that, God, because I know You. I want to ask you again, one last time this morning, who are you? Which one of the people are you in that story? In the rest of that passage, it said that there were many people that heard this story and they realized that they were living in sin. They realized that they had been they had been serving other gods. And it said that they came and they repented and they asked God for forgiveness and they gave their lives to God. And when we know who we are and we carry Jesus into the places that we live, and people see that in us, they want to give their lives to Jesus like the little girl that came to my home. It's not us who makes the difference. It's Jesus. And don't have to worry about what other people think about us anymore. We don't need someone. Oh, I need someone to love me. We know our Father who loves us. We can have confidence. When you leave today, I want you to, as you go out and go to your schools, you go to your work, you go to your homes. I want you to learn from this story this morning and know I can go with authority. New Life Phnom Penh to my as a church is a light in this community. When we plant a new church in a new town or a new village, Satan and all the demons of hell, they know, and they're going to they're going to leave. And you as a people are going to bring the kingdom of God. And this morning, as we uh, as we close this morning, I'm just uh, ask the worship team, ask the worship team to uh, to come. And this morning. I just want to. I want to pray for you this morning. I want to pray, 
And maybe this morning you could you would say, well, Pastor, when you were talking about people who were sick, you were talking about people with problems, or you were talking about people who've been harassed by evil spirits. I'm not doing very well. Can someone pray for me? The leaders of the church, anytime, they want to pray for you. If that's you, they want to pray for you. So we want to pray for you this morning. Because Jesus the healer is here. And he loves you. We want to pray for you this morning. Maybe this morning you're saying, you know what? I know about Jesus. But I don't want to be like those seven sons of Sceva. Sometimes I, I try to use that name Jesus. But but it doesn't seem to work because I don't really know who he is. I haven't given my life to him. I haven't given my life to him. If that's you and you want to give your life to Jesus, you want to have confidence, you say, I want to know who I am. Then come today and we want to we want to pray for you so that you can know the person who created you. We want to pray for you this morning. And maybe finally, maybe you just say, Look, I want to be like Paul. I know I have the calling of God on my life and I want to be like Paul. And you just want to, you just want someone to pray with you this morning. We'll do that. All right.